Good evening and welcome to Fox 26 News at 9. I'm Domalee Keith. Thank you so much for staying up late with us. First tonight, a suspect and two brothers are dead in a double murder suicide in Northeast Harris County after a domestic dispute. Fox 26's Jonathan Mejia takes us to that neighborhood where he's speaking with neighbors who witnessed it all. Neighbors tell me it's normal to hear gunshots in the area, but what occurred was too close to home. And according to authorities, it wasn't their first time being called to this home. Harris County Sheriff investigators say what began as an argument between a couple led the woman running, seeking refuge with her two teenage sons to a neighboring home. What ensued was a shootout that left two brothers, 50-year-old Edward Lopez Robles and 31-year-old Luis Lopez Robles and the suspected shooter, Carlos Guerra, dead in a double murder suicide. At first, I thought it was some normal shooting because we usually hear people get drunk and shoot towards the ground, but I didn't know that three people had died. I'm in shock because I never saw something like that before. I parked and I heard them, but I, I was like, okay, I need to rush and go inside my house. And then um, I was uh, cooking for my kids. And then I was going to come outside to throw out my trash and I heard them again. And I was talking to my friends and they're like, no, just stay inside because they were super close. Authorities do not know how close the woman and the two men were, but were told that the woman felt safe enough to go there for help. Two of the brothers were killed. Third brother armed himself with a handgun began to engage the uh, shooter. They shot at each other several times. Um, that's when we believe the suspect went inside his own residence and shot himself. Alberto Hernandez knew the brothers as they were his next door neighbors. And ever since witnessing the scene, he's had a hard time. I saw the bodies laying on the ground. I haven't been able to sleep. It was three in the morning and their bodies were still laying on the ground. The woman and her two teenage sons survived the shooting and are cooperating in the investigation. Reporting in the studio, Jonathan Mejia, Fox 26 News. Getting involved in domestic disputes that other people have with each other, uh, it, it can it can be dangerous and risky. Uh, the the instinct to help, I think, is just natural, uh, but there's just so many things that you have to consider before getting involved in a uh, a domestic dispute that that somebody else is having. You know, and and there's no requirement for you to get involved. Uh, but if you do decide to get involved, then you have to be prepared for whatever will come after that. Uh, it's it's um, it's important, I think, to understand that the, these situations, they're more complex than they seem when looking in from the outside. You're on the outside looking in and you really don't know what's going on. So you're pretty much flying blind into a situation that you don't know anything about. And, and if you're going to inter intervene, then you must understand that you could be putting yourself and others at risk and the outcome could be fatal. Now, with this situation, the argument or, or the fight that this woman was having with her boyfriend, it spilled over to the home uh, next door where the uh, three brothers lived. And the woman took the two children, uh, her two children over there for safety, uh, safety reasons. And of course, the boyfriend, you know, would follow. And he was confronted by the three brothers outside their home. And that's when the shooting started. And we all know what happened after that. But here's my thing. Do not allow other people to bring their messy ass drama to your door. Nobody should bring their personal drama to your home. And allowing others to bring drama to your home can and will disrupt your peace. And I get it. This woman, she was looking for a way to escape, looking for a way out. Uh, trying to get away from her boyfriend who ended up taking his own life. But a few days before all of this went down, there was a family violence call to the home uh, where the woman and her boyfriend lived. So, I mean, it, it would maybe seem like there was a history of this happening before. Um, and, and I think it just kind of, it was kind of like a buildup over time. And, you know, for those who intervene, I think the hardest thing to realize is that even with help, or interference sometimes some people won't ever leave that relationship and, and and they do have that right you know it's their choice to to make uh but it just makes no sense for somebody to get involved and then you have that person who's trying to flee or seek help they go right back to the person that they're trying to get away from uh and, and i think that's why it's so important to take into account your own safety before getting involved um it's vital to proceed 
in these situations with extreme caution and, and always listen to your gut. Um, the surviving brother, he did have a gun of his own and he was able to defend himself um, because somehow I, I couldn't help but think that if that one brother didn't have his own gun, I mean, he probably would have lost his life too. And that, and that brings me to another thing. If you're going to get involved, assume that everybody's got a weapon on them, whether it's a knife or in this case, a gun. And maybe the brother that had the gun, maybe he knew that the boyfriend was a hothead and things could escalate, but you just never know which way these things will go. Um, I was kind of thinking about something else too, where there was a guy up in uh, New York, was a 52 year old man up in New York who tried to intervene in the dispute of this couple that, you know, they were arguing or something on the subway and he, he ended up being punched in the face, which caused him to fall into the train tracks. And thankfully he survived. But what if he didn't, you know, and, um, like I said, I mean, you just never know how these things are going to go and you got to be very careful. And so with this situation with the, uh, the brothers down there, um, <clears throat> I think the first order of business should, should, should have been to call 911. Maybe they did that. Um, and, and I know with 911, it, it can take the cops some time to get there. And, um, you know, from there, I think maybe the best thing would have been to just go inside, lock the doors and wait. And if that dude decided that he was going to try to force his way in, then at that point you do what you need to do. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just unfortunate that these two brothers had to lose their lives and get caught up in an unpredictable situation like that. Uh, a situation that didn't have anything to do with them at first, you know? So, but listen, heroic actions, while often admirable and inspiring, can indeed have significant and sometimes unintended consequences. And in the rush to act heroically, decisions may be made quickly, sometimes without a full understanding of a situation. Uh, many heroic actions involve personal risk or sacrifice, such as putting oneself in danger to help others. So just a little something to think about. You know, Got to be careful, you know, when, when trying to step in and intervene in these domestic disputes, because it, 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 it never ends well, you know, uh, especially for the person who's trying to be the helper. So y'all take care, stay safe and just make better choices. Peace y'all.